Hi, Terry Rowland from T. Row Studios. Today I'm going to talk to you about assembling your color wash quilt. You've got your blocks all made and we're ready to assemble it. In this video I am going to touch on chain piecing and webbing a quilt. I love webbing these small block quilts and I hope you do too. Please watch right to the end because when when I'm finished, I'll give you a great tip um, when you're done piecing your quilt. All right, so we're finished building all of our blocks. We've laid them all out onto our flannel back tablecloth. And the reason we did it in a flannel back tablecloth is the blocks stick to the flannel, but when I unroll them, they don't stick to the plastic. So that's why I really like this process of, of putting my blocks out. Now, I had somebody say that they had um, wanted to lay their blocks out on a tablecloth, but they didn't have two, and they had more blocks than the, what um, the tablecloth would hold. So I have in the past, if I had extra blocks, I have actually stacked them up just to get them onto the tablecloth and then rolled them up. So that's a, a possibility if you've got a couple extra um, blocks at the end or you want it just a little bit wider, you can actually just stack them up on top and still be able to roll it up. That's just a, a quick tip if you've got not a big enough uh, tablecloth. All right, so when you laid them out, I hope that you did basically a basket weave. So I've got the, the seams on this block are going this way and the seams that are going to be um, sewn to it will be going the other way. If you do this on all of your blocks going this way and up and down, you won't have any bulky seams here. If you were to place this like this, you're gonna have some bulky seams which are going to be hard to, to deal with. So as long as you place all of your blocks in a black basket weave, so this way, this way, this way, this way, all the way along, you won't have any, any um, problems with um, bulky seams. Now, <clears throat> when I'm set up to sew this, I'm gonna have my sewing machine here, and I'm gonna have a table that is long, as long as whatever my roll of, um, my, my rolled up quilt is. Then I'm going to unroll two rows. I have used a ironing board on the side. I might have had to put a little piece of cardboard underneath it to sp support it if it was a little longer than the ironing board. I, I make it work and you'll see that in the video. Um, I've actually got a six foot table beside me with a, a bit of a um, a cardboard on top of it just to give it a little support on the ends. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up all the blocks in the order that I want to sew them. So I pick up the whole row and I set it right here. Now I pick up the second row because this is the ones I'm going to be putting sewing them to. Always in the same orientation as I've got them laid out. And I'll set this here. My sewing machine will be here. I'm going to take this block, set it on the bed of my sewing machine, and then I'm going to put this one on top. I have um, no seams and I've got the seams here. And I'm going to start stitching right here. When I get to the end, I don't break thread. I just set the next block in. I don't have any seams on that one. And this one will have seams. And I will sew to the end. And I'm not going to break the seam or the, the, the thread. We'll just set the next one in and we'll place this one on top. Make sure, I should have told you this earlier, to shorten your stitch length. When we're doing this chain piecing, it's nicer to have a bit of a, a shorter stitch length. I usually quilt with about a, a, um, a number two stitch length. 
I would go down to a 1.8 just to have those stitches just a little bit closer together. When you're doing small blocks, and these ones have got a few seams in them, the, the shorter stitch length um, is, is really important. I'm going to keep chaining these ones together until I get to the end. Then all of these will be joined together by a little piece of thread in this seam. Just set it off to the side and then unroll one more row, and I'm going to pick this row up. Again, I'm not turning them, I'm picking them up in the same order that I've got them placed out. And I'll set this in front of my sewing machine. I'm gonna take these webbed blocks together, and I'm going to sew on this side and I'm going to keep sewing and I'm going to chain piece this whole row together. When I get done all of this quilt can be picked up and it will have little pieces of thread between each one of these rows. I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to get Hi. I'm going to try and explain to you how I'm putting my quilt together. You saw me actually sewing all of those rows together and I chain pieced them all. Well, as you can see, I have not cut the threads between any of those. So they are, all of my rows are um, joined together with those little pieces of thread. But each of the rows is stitched. So now the next um, way I'm going to put this together is I am just going to put them right side together. And when I put it through, and I'll, I'll be putting this end through first, I will make sure that my seams nest at each of those intersections. Doesn't matter on these seams, but the corner ones have to match. And I can feel that with my fingers if I've got them nested. If you need to pin, this would be where you would pin as it, at the corners of each of the blocks. And I'm going to sew this whole row. Then I'm not taking it to the ironing board and pressing it. I'm going to make sure that when I'm sewing it that they're all folding this way as I sew and the back ones are folding the other way, nesting the seam again and I'm going to sew the whole row. When those are sewn, I'm going to fold to the next row. And on this one, the top one's going to be this direction and the bottom one is going to be going this direction. So again, I'm going to nest my seams all the way through. And that's how I'm going to do each row in my quilt. This technique is called webbing a quilt. So all of these little threads look like little webs holding your, your quilt together. And that's why it's called webbing a quilt. It's a great technique because your blocks don't get out of order and you can do your whole quilt and not have it put together wrong, put it that way. Anyways, I will, I will take another video as I'm doing this, but basically I am putting them right side together, folding the seams one direction on the top, the opposite direction on the bottom that allows me to nest all of those seams and I'm going to just keep repeating that all the way through my quilt.
When you're finished quilting or sewing your blocks together, it's a great idea to put a stay stitch or a, a running stitch all the way around the outside edge. It helps lock all of these seams together. If you don't, a lot of these will flail open, especially if you didn't shorten your stitch length. If you shortened your stitch length, you'll have less of that. Um, but it does, it, it keeps it from stretching because I know everybody's going to want to pull their quilt up and show everybody their beautiful quilt when it's done. Um, but you'll find that you will stretch the sides of it, which will make it a little more challenging when you're wanting to make a square quilt um, in the quilting um, portion of it. Anyways, a stay stitch around the outside edge locks all those seams together and it keeps it from stretching.